So this this is the the, the hydrocell uh, sealess diaphragm, and it's a, a 90 horsepower, 91 fluid horsepower uh, plunger pump, but it's a sealess design. Uh, so if you notice in here, we don't have any packing or plungers that need maintenance. There's no uh, area to get rid of the waste because plungers always need to be lubricated. The packing needs to be maintained. So there's there's less maintenance on this type of pump. There's no the the, the plungers and the packing and the cylinders are not in the, the process fluid, so they they're not a maintenance item anymore. So there's less cost for the you know the, the monthly operation of this type of pump. So the the, the fluid uh, uh, is in contact with the diaphragm, right? Just on top of the diaphragm. Yeah, okay. The, the and diaphragm, this diaphragm is uh, is being powered with this this. Uh, exactly. Oh, the same okay. fluid that lubricates the bearings drives the diaphragm okay. hydraulically, but they're they're not connected mechanically. Okay, so the diaphragm is completely separate. It's a balanced diaphragm type of pump. So this and this is a 3,000 psi pump, and you could be operating at 500 psi, 10 psi, or 3,000. The diaphragm only sees five psi differential pressure. It's not under stress. Okay. It's only a bare barrier, and then it also we make it in different materials for chemical resistance, depending upon if you're pumping sour, sour so, fluid. So the fluid will be uh, seeing the in, inside of the diaphragm. I mean, that is the area where the fluid is. Yes. Will yeah. Okay. So, so when you're considering what you're pumping, we would choose the right diaphragm, diaphragm or the right fluid head material. This is nickel, aluminum, bronze. We also make it in 316 stainless. Okay. So if you're a little, running a little sour, so, yeah. that kind of thing. Okay. So if you, the type of maintenance that needs to be done on this pump that is typical, the valves. Uh, the discharge valves, the suction valves, can all be maintained without disturbing the plumbing. So routine maintenance, an operator, someone could come up to the site and to get into a discharge valve, their access through the top here, um, and you remove these plates and the discharge valves come out. And these, this, is, this is, comes in a cartridge valve. This is heat treated stainless. We also make it in tungsten carbide. So if there's a lot of sand in the well, uh, particulates, we can uh, you know we can beef up the, the abrasion resistance of our valves. So from a replacement standpoint, um, very simple to do, very straightforward, and that's somewhat that's typical of any pump. You're going to have valves to work on, but there's no real special equipment you need. So the dis discharge valves can be accessed from here, okay. and then the suction valves you would remove these bolts, okay. and then you'd pull it off this way. If you need to get farther back in the pump to, to access the diaphragms, we offer uh, in, a, in our toolkit, we offer these uh, basically precision studs that we have called stud extenders, and these would be mounted in the, the four outer studs. Okay. So once you take your head bolts off, these can go on, okay. and then you, then you remove your, your, your bolts, your head bolts. These, these bolts also have to be lo loosened. They go back into the diaphragm plate for strength. So there, you need to get into the diaphragms. You, you pull it out like this. So here, now we have a situation where you can see the diaphragms are exposed. You can inspect the diaphragms from here. If you feel that a diaphragm, it's not a, it's not a wear item. It's not something that you need to do on a PM. Um, but they can become un under a chemical attack. It could yep. be any kind of additive that you might that might be going in the well, rust inhibitor or what have you. So you can inspect them from here. If they need replacement, mm -hmm. there's just two screws here. Pull it off, put on a new one. And what happens is the diaphragm too from here also, you see the outer lip acts as an O-ring seal. So you, it allows you to pull this off without having to put any new O-rings in. So the diaphragm is also the seal and it also does the work. So this is a two and a half inch stroke pump. So for every two and a half inches, the diaphragm moves three quarters of an inch of okay. displacement. Okay. Yeah. This one runs basically about a, a barrel a minute, 45 gallons a minute. And, and how long does this last usually? The, the diaphragms? In, I mean, in a, in a, in a hostile environment. In a, in a hostile environment, I would replace them on a yearly basis. Okay. And it's, it's it usually not, it could be chemical attack, yeah. but what happens is if you get a, a, a lot of abrasives, which we do, you know, the wells get a lot of sand, and then you get abrasiveness, just replace them. They're not under stress, but is, if they get cut. Is it uh, very expensive? No, no, they're not expensive. It is like a consumable. Uh, yeah, it's a consumable. You okay. know, you know nothing, everything. Nothing, you know, so, so special or uh, 
no, making not, it more expensive. No, it's not more expensive at all. So the, the, what we're trying to do here is we have a pump that's it's easier to work on, yep. zero emissions. So if there's any kind of pumping light hydrocarbons, we don't have to put any kind of you know gas containment area on the stuffing box. Right. And uh, this this can hold 3,000 psi. This pump is 3,000. We have another option that goes up to 5,000. You know, it depends upon yeah. you know your well conditions. Well conditions. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then we have a lot of sm smaller pumps too that are uh, up to a quintuplex. You know, and smaller flows for if you have some you know smaller producing wells that can be used. And the jet pumps also, you know, they they'll, they'll pair that with their program to get you know optimize the surface pump to what's down there. So, I mean, what make it more energy efficient? I mean, is this more en energy efficient? No, it's not. It is. It is not more energy efficient. Okay. We have the same type of uh, uh, energy requirements as an other type of pump. Okay. As far as mechanically, we're, we're not any more energy efficient. Okay. Volumetrical efficiency is about the same. Okay. We, but the main advantage is like, you know, this is more environmental friendly and then it's a like consumer system. Exactly. And it's easier to work on easier it. Work on and you don't, you don't have the usual maintenance cost of the packing the plungers okay. or having to get rid of the waste because they have to leak. So then you have to have some way of disposing of the, yeah, the drip. I understand. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, uh, what about the, the, the overall cost uh, uh, compared to a conventional pumping system? Very, to, very, this be very competitive. More. Very competitive. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're not the high guy, we're not the low guy okay. you know, on, on the block for that okay. kind of thing. So, um, And what about the maintenance on the other side? The maintenance on the other side will, will, be, will be typical. We have a forge crank and in our crank, you know, for our connecting rods, we have, you know, re replaceable Babbitt shell bearings. Okay. So that would be somewhat typical uh, of a, a similar type of pump. Okay. Um, they, so they, like uh, annual maintenance, uh, you know, the yep. um, schedules, etc. Except, it. yep, and that's and that that's put together based upon hours per day and your operating conditions. We have a chart on how often to change the oil. Okay. Um, one of the nice things about this design versus m many typical plunger pumps is that the, the, the crank the crank bearing does not doesn't have to be shimmed. Okay. We use spherical roller bearings, mm -hmm. so this crank can be removed within a period. Of anywhere from three to five hours, depending upon you know the condition of the pump. Okay. And you go back, and the installation is much easier. No dial indicators on the shaft. You put it in, and our plungers are self-aligned okay. in, into the cylinders. Okay. And the reason we can do that is because we don't have any packing in there where we have to worry about even even running with the packing. Otherwise, the packing the plunger gets cocked, packing leaks. Right. Our plungers run in a in a ductile iron cylinder with a hardened steel, so two dissimilar metals that's always lubricated with the oil in the ground. Okay. And, and this this is the same oil here as well, right? I mean, it is, it, yep. Okay. And it's, it's a typical, whatever, yeah. for many applications, 10W30, cold applications, synthetics can be used, and no special type of lubricating oil in the, in the back. Okay. Yep, something that can be picked up locally. So after you're done, if, if you wanted to get farther in the back of the pump, we can do that. Okay. We'll remove some of this here. So what would happen if, if you wanted to get in the back and check the operation of what's going on behind the diaphragm? It's, it's, a, it's okay. a very, you know, it's a robust and simple design, but these these two bolts would have to be loosened and removed, and then at, at this point, uh, you, you can, in the field, get back. And here we show, from this angle, you can see uh, our cylinders. This is a, a, a ductile iron Durabar type cylinder. We have uh, two-way checks here. So if, if some of the oil gets foamed and back and we get some entrained air, the air will automatically go out and then once you get viscous oil, it closes. So these will hold up against whatever pressure is behind the diaphragm. Okay. Here's our plungers. Um, you know, very similar to any other type of pump. They are floating though, which is nice. Okay. And and how we do that on our crosshead, coming through the crosshead to the plunger, we use spring-loaded Bellevue washers. And so it allows, once you assemble this back together, the plungers find their true line. 
it's easier to work on that one. So th once you're in the back, this is very similar to anything else as far as maintenance and that type of thing. Um, but this gives you a, a kind of a good idea of what's going on behind here to make it a sealess type pump. Um, one of the things too that we, we tested, uh, the pump can run dry. So if your tank runs real low, and for, by some reason, it happens. Yeah. There won't be oh, any. Yeah, it, because you know it is an effort. Right. Yeah, and no damage to the pump because we're not using whatever you're pumping as a lubricant. Yep. So it can run dry. You fill the tank, you start it up, and away it goes. So, and um, we also run a, a closed inlet test on the pump um, where we actually shut the suction off every 20 seconds and also to max pressure. So this pump can run, somebody clogs a strainer. It, ha it happens or closes a valve on the suction side. If you starve the pump, once you once you fix the obstruction and get fluid to the pump, it'll take off. It won't damage the pump on a starved suction.